The power of sport is a miraculous thing. It builds strength and confidence. It heals and inspires. It promotes fairness and inclusion. It brings communities together. It provides a level playing field. Hello, and welcome to Level Playing Field. I'm your host, Greg Westlake. Over the next half hour, we'll be showcasing two incredible para-athletes who are both using the power of sport to build community, character, and so much more. First off, we have Kevin Rempel, a former para-ice hockey teammate of mine, or REMPS, as we like to call him at the rink. REMPS and I had the opportunity to play for Canada in 2014 in Sochi, Russia. At that point in time, the sport was still called sledge hockey. Since then, it's gone through a bit of a rebranding and is now known globally as para-ice hockey. However, here in Canada, it is still very well known as sledge hockey, and Kevin uses that term in his new business, the sledge hockey experience. This allows companies the opportunity to get into a sled and play and learn the sport that Kevin loves. The Sledge Hockey Experience is a half-day corporate team building event created to not only help bring awareness to both Paralympic sport and what people with disabilities can do, but also the challenges we face and how to overcome those challenges. As Kevin Rempel and his team make the final preparations for their next clients of the Sledge Hockey Experience at the MasterCard Center in the West End of Toronto, you can forgive him if his mind wanders to just how he got here. The story begins in the winter of 2002. Dad and I were out deer hunting, building a tree stand. One of the branches he was standing on broke and my dad fell two stories to the ground. And in the accident, he severed his spinal cord and became a complete paraplegic. So life was uh, quickly flipped up on the side of his head. And all of a sudden, we had someone with a disability in our household. While the Rempel family was able to adjust, Kevin's father, Jerry, struggled. When my dad returned home, he became very depressed and more so developed a serious gambling addiction. We, uh, we did everything we could to help get my dad back involved in hunting again or talk about adaptive sports or a vehicle with hand controls and he wasn't interested in learning how to adapt. During this time, Kevin's childhood love of motocross had morphed from a pastime into a budding professional career. <laughs> that all changed on July 15, 2006, when tragedy struck the Rempel family for a second time. The day I crashed, I showed up at this event very pissed off because things weren't going well and I wasn't focused. You gotta be focused when you're jumping a 75 foot gap. And as soon as I took off, something wasn't right. My split second decision was either stay on the bike or jump off. I decided if I jump off, it's the best case scenario, break my legs versus break my neck and free fell from the sky. And then as I hit the ground, tumble and rolled. Once I got the air back in my lungs, I tried to move and it felt like a knife was twisting my back. And I knew in that moment that I also was paralyzed. The verbatim, the words I remember out of the doctor's mouth were, Kevin, you will likely never walk again, and if you do, you'll have braces on your legs up to your hips the rest of your life. As Kevin was dealing with his new reality, his father continued to spiral, and in the spring of 2007, he took his own life. His death hit the family hard, but it wasn't until the next summer that Kevin contemplated following his father's path. But as his mother surely remembers, Kevin wanted something different. He didn't want to be like his dad because he saw how, how that eats away at you. I've never seen anybody with so much determination in all my life. And my mother and I get our inspiration from him. I looked at my dad and it was my motivation of what not to do or who I didn't want to be like. And I, I hate to say that, like my dad was a great father. He was still a great man, but just how he looked at life following his injury, he t took on a victim mentality. You may not be responsible for what happens to you, but you're responsible for what you do about it. And as sooner that you accept responsibility for, for your situation, you can start to take control back. And that is exactly what Kevin did. I had no guarantee I was gonna get back. It was six weeks until I wiggled my first toe. So that when it finally happened, I 
of course was excited, but it also showed me like the importance of having faith and, and putting in the work even when you don't see the results. I then said to myself is if I can get one toe, I can get another toe and I did. And then I got three toes and then another three toes. And, and so in those moments, it's, I'm living through them right now in the business is the truth is that I'm trying to figure out again, what's the next step. You just have to continue to maintain that faith and belief and show up every single day. Kevin kept showing up and eventually all of his hard work paid off when he regained the ability to walk without braces. Following the break, Kevin walks us through his Paralympic highs and lows. I got to that suicidal point, um, probably like around the four month mark after the games. I was definitely at rock bottom. Level playing field will be right back. Welcome back to Level Playing Field. Sport Explained, Para Ice Hockey. Para Ice Hockey rinks are traditional ice hockey rinks, but are converted to be accessible for sledges. The ice surface is 60 meters long by 30 meters wide and is surrounded by a wall called boards. There is a center red line that divides the rink in half and two blue lines that create 30 meter defensive zones for each team. There are nine face-off dots, the main being at center ice. The nets are set in each defensive zone on opposite sides of the ice surface, four meters from the end boards. Para hockey and ice hockey used the same 2.5 cm by 7.6 cm vulcanized rubber disc, otherwise known as a puck, but some of the other equipment is quite different. The most notable is the sledge, which players use to get around the ice surface. A sledge consists of a plastic seat that's connected to a U-shaped frame made from aluminum or steel. The frame must be at least 80 cm in length and have a maximum height of 20 centimeters from the bottom of the seat to the ice. Beneath the seat are a set of sharpened parallel blades. The blades range from 16 to 32 centimeters. Players then strap into their seat using plastic ratchet straps for safety and comfort. The other piece of equipment that sets para ice hockey apart are the sticks which range from 65 centimeters to 100 centimeters in length. Also, players use two sticks while on the ice. With one in each hand, the sticks are dual-ended. On one side, there are metal picks attached to help players propel themselves around the playing surface. On the other side is a curved blade that's used for handling and shooting the puck. And now you're ready to hit the ice. Welcome back, I'm your host, Greg Westlake. Now I know I'm incredibly biased, but I love para ice hockey. Everybody should get out and try it. One way you can do that is by using the sledge hockey experience with Kevin Rempel. We met Kevin before the break. Now we continue his story. Despite permanent atrophy in his legs, Kevin was able to walk again for the first time in 2007. The following year, another important moment in his recovery happened. He found the sport, para hockey. He started for fun and recreation with his local club, but his mom quickly realized that this would be so much more. To watch him play on Niagara Thunderblades and he just seemed to have natural ability about it. He caught on pretty quick and he's running circles around everybody and scoring goals and all that. And I'm just like, wow. It's like, how can you ask for anything more? They killed it on the breakaway got on the ice and it was just like, I got my heart rate up, got my sweat on, and it was just that feeling again of being an athlete and I just fell in love instantly. In the 2010-11 season, he cracked Team Canada's roster and went on to represent our country at the 2014 Paralympics in Sochi, Russia. Ripple with a shot, and huge stop. It was super fun getting to travel the world and play for Canada, it was incredible. I learned from the best players in the world and you know, the dream was getting to the Paralympics and then to actually make that happen was surreal. Team Canada for bronze. I didn't think the post-Olympic crash was real. It totally is. It blindsided me. I thought I had it all figured out. Um, 
came home, a bronze medal, super happy, healthy, and it was great for about two weeks and all of a sudden didn't matter anymore. It felt like there was no, no reason to get up out of bed. Like the, the Olympics or Paralympics is what pulls you out of, out of bed to like pursue that goal or that dream. And so like having not set any other new goals and dreams, uh, it spun me into a very downward spiral. I got to that um, suicidal point um, probably like around the four month mark after the games. And when I found myself in the emergency psychiatric ward, I was definitely at rock bottom. Once again, Kevin chose a different path and soon realized what his next true calling was to allow corporate teams to try para ice hockey with the sledge hockey experience. This is the sledge hockey experience. I wanted to help the sport grow. And I saw that instead of trying to chase after one disabled person at a time, that if I can get the rest of Canada to experience our country's favorite sport in a new way, I feel like I can help the sport grow bigger and faster. Like, I began playing on a sled like this. And the challenges that you'll experience on the ice today, specifically around turning and stopping, were the exact same challenges that I faced the first time I got on the ice. It's gonna be difficult. As the company has grown, Kevin has surrounded himself with people eager to see the venture succeed. One of those being his brand manager, roommate, and friend, Blair Bouchard. Blair believes it's Kevin's resilience that sets him apart from other business owners. I think it's, it's important that he's bridging that gap between people with disabilities and people without. And to be able to change perspectives through Paralympic sport is something that's amazing and I just want to keep spreading that message. When you get on the ice, like the best thing about sledge hockey is that everybody's equal. You get out here and it doesn't matter what your disability is, whether you have a, a physical impairment or even a cognitive impairment, everybody gets on here and we all just become equal and it's a level playing field that uh, we get to celebrate and enjoy the game of hockey together. Kevin recognizes that he wouldn't be where he is today without people supporting him on his long journey to mental wellness and athletic success. And he just wants to pay it forward. I'm at a point in my life now where I can give back because it's, I spent a lot of my years making selfish decisions to get to where I wanted to be and I just want to know that before I leave this earth that I gave as much as I took. The work Kevin is doing is simply incredible. We need more people out in their communities pushing Paris sport. If you would like to dive deeper into Kevin's story, please read his autobiography. And if you're interested in trying sledge hockey, go to playsledgehockey.com.